My name is Gregory Arlt, and I am a makeup artist. Was that too soft? <laughs> I am a makeup artist. I am in the business to make people look and feel beautiful. When you're doing a red lip, is anyone watching? Are we in? Are people here? I grew up in a household with two older sisters and a mother and a dad who is an artist. Instead of throwing a ball around in the backyard, um, when I was a kid, my dad actually set up easels and taught my sister and I to paint. I loved drawing. I loved doodling. I would always doodle like an eyebrow, a little cat eye with lashes, and a little beauty mark right by the eye. When I was a kid, I also really loved the 40s and the 50s. I loved that beauty it was so hyper real to me my mom was like uber simple like she had really really dark hair and pale skin and, and never really wore a lot of makeup except for she always had a bright lip and that was her thing like she just she did not have time to be putting makeup on i remember her going to the broadway to go shopping and her coming home with just bags of makeup and I did not know who the woman was that walked in the door. She had my mother's voice, but she certainly didn't have my mother's face. I mean, blues and purples on her eyes. I was like, that's my mom, oh my God, she's so glamorous. I remember her going into her bedroom and starting to unload the makeup and I was watching every single step. I was like, what is that, what is that? And I remember the way it smelled. I mean, the smell just reminded me of like sophistication and something different, something that was not the normal suburban smell that I grew up with, which was like spaghetti sauce and pledge. Being a child of the 80s and going out clubbing, makeup was always walking sort of beside me and I would always put makeup on. Glam, new wave makeup. A powdered face and a darkened eyebrow and perhaps a little lip gloss, maybe a little liner. I didn't know that there was makeup for the red carpet. Gathered that there were makeup artists on photo shoots. It still at that point was sort of you worked behind a cosmetic counter. That's what a makeup artist did. I just remember a friend of mine said, you should go look at Fred Siegel in Santa Monica. I, in my head, had no business walking into Fred Siegel, any Fred Siegel. It was a different world. So I remember going in and I applied. I applied. Two sisters, Robin and Jennifer Coe, own the store. And I remember they said to me, do you have makeup experience? And I totally lied and I said, absolutely, sure. And I did, I, you know, did my friends in high school and myself, like I mentioned. I said, yes, absolutely. I really want to do this fragrance, but sure, I can do makeup. They said, we would love to have you come work for us. I was the first ever guy to work. Um, I don't know why I just did guy, because I am a guy. I was the first ever male to work at Fred Siegel in the cosmetics department. Uh, it was a girl's world, and that's exactly where I felt the most comfortable. Now I knew what a makeup artist could be. I've been there for three and a half years. At that point, I realized that you could do freelance. I was getting more into makeup. I was doing photo shoots here and there. And then I remember in one week's time, I bumped into three different people in three different, completely different scenarios who worked for Mac. And they were like, you should come work for Mac. And I was like, this sounds like a dream come true. I remember calling the person who ran the region. Her name was Catherine Clark. It was a really, really grueling interview process. I did a verbal interview. I had to bring in two models. One model that was like, you know, to do something really natural every day and then kind of bump it up for evening. And then I had to bring in another model who was a dramatic, like editorial runway kind of look. I felt like everything was on the line. <laughs> Literally, everything was on the eye line. Um, I really, really wanted this job. Like, I could taste it. I was like, I've got to get this job. It was a challenge. It was definitely a challenge. It was a, it was a good challenge. So, got the job. Hi, I'm Gregory Arlt, Director of Makeup Artistry for MAC Cosmetics. Everything changed. Everything just changed. It was just like this experience that I couldn't even remotely believe that I've gotten to have it. I mean, it was a small little company and it was on this meteoric rise, and I was on that rocket with them, because I literally came right when the company was exploding. He's the makeup artist to the stars, the Mac Daddy of Mac Cosmetics, Gregory Arlt. Thank you. Hey, son. I actually, funny story, very funny story. This is before the Tragic Kingdom album came out, when I was traveling around doing makeup for Mac, 
And I had this one client named Jackie who worked for a record label and she was like, oh my God, I work with this band called No Doubt. She's like, I have to send Gwen in. I really want to send her to see you. I think she'd love you. So Gwen came to see me all by herself. Came to Nordstrom. So this really pretty girl with platinum hair and a red lip. And I remember we just had a great time doing makeup. <laughs> I think she had stopped doing that at that point, but she was working at a cosmetic counter, like as a makeup artist in Orange County at the Broadway department store, which is ironically where my mother got her makeover. She's like, hey, you know, we should go makeup shopping someday. That would be really fun. And I remember her handing me Tragic Kingdom, the CD, going, Here's our CD, it's going to be coming out, we're total losers, and if it doesn't do well, I'll probably come get a job with you at Mac. And I was like, right on. <laughs> a few days later, she called me. It was my day off that day. So I didn't call her back. Sorry. Tragic Kingdom came out, they exploded. And I remember thinking, I need to call this girl back. And of course, she changed her number. Because now she's big and famous. So that was the first, and at that time, last time I worked with one Stefani. So it's funny how sometimes, you know, there's a little gap between working with people. I also have to say that she loves makeup so much, and I love makeup so much. She definitely has a look, a classic look with cat eye and a red lip. Sometimes we've both been really inspired by the 60s, and we'll do this sort of 60s eye with a pale mouth. We just geek out over makeup all the time. There's almost an unachievability about their looks. Because when I look on a face like Gwen Stefani or Dita Von Teese, I mean, there's such a specificness to their glamour, which I love. It's like a, a beautifully defined eyebrow, a perfect cat eye. And it's like, if you're gonna do that, you better make sure it's flawless. You know what I mean? There's no like, I'm just gonna slap it on. That's not who I am. It's nice to kind of be known for so doing really pristine glamour. I have to show you. So there's this book, The Art of Makeup. I look at these pages and I can't believe the magic that he created. Um, Kevin O'Quan was one of the most inspiring makeup artists for me. And I loved his beauty books. Um, they were incredible. They were everything. A beauty book was the first thing that allowed me to know what makeup artistry really, really truly was. It's always been a dream of mine to do a book. And even in this digital age, there's nothing like having a coffee table book. And I want it to be very much in that vein. Um, not a copy, but an homage. I'm working on it with a genius photographer, Steve Earl, who's absolutely incredible. We have the same exact eye as far as aesthetic goes, what we think is beautiful, what we think is glamorous. My philosophy as a makeup artist is I've always said I'm a beauty exorcist. I like to pull the beauty out of somebody as opposed to pile it onto somebody. And even if I am doing a ton of makeup on someone, it should still respect who they are. So that's the working title of the book, Beauty Exorcist, and it's all about being the A-plus version of yourself. There's so much potential out there. There's a lot of creativity. There's a lot of good technicians out there with respect to makeup. What I could say to future generations of makeup artists, the most important things is to know your references. There's a grace to being in the moment, but if you don't know your past, you don't know your future. You have to know, you have to know your references. It's so, so important. You might be on a shoot, with a legendary photographer and they might be like, think, you know, sort of Edie Sedgwick when she was at the factory. There's some references I don't know sometimes. I also think because of so much influence on Instagram with makeup styles and, you know, I think that they run the risk of doing makeup a little paint by numbers and they're not looking at the big picture. And I think that's um, something that I see happening a lot. I just want to make sure that the message is just stay educated and stay humble. I realize now that you can't take anything personally. Sometimes if I've been rejected and find out that I'm not really being booked with somebody anymore and, they've, and then I find out they've moved on to someone else. I mean, we're artists, yes, does it stink? Of course it does, but at the end of the day, it's like, wow, this is opening other opportunities for me. Have I been let down? Of course, I've been let down in this industry by certain things. Then sometimes you kind of feel like the magic disappears a little bit, but then I go, you know, this is just one isolated incident. And then I think about other people I work with, or I think of other experiences I've had, or I think about what's coming up for me. And then it's like, it's magic all over again, you know? I think that if you let the disappointments truly get you down, you're never gonna advance. You confront it or let it go. That's one of my biggest models in my life and otherwise don't sit around complaining about it. Yes, there are billions of makeup artists out there. One of the biggest 
roadblocks you can set up for yourself is to believe that there's competition. And that's another way that I've stayed sane in this industry. And I realize I don't have competition. There's no me. There's no other you. Every single thing in my life has led up to this moment. You know, like, and it took me a minute because I did also feel like I was in a world that I didn't know where I belonged in. You know, I didn't know wh wh what the possibilities were. But then when I started meeting these people, that reality started unfolding and I saw like, oh, that's what a makeup artist can be. Then it started to kind of click and, and it made me realize that um, that's a world that I can live in. Totally.